Welcome to another episode of The Artist Report. This video is from Connecting Things July Gathering, which is a speaker series that happens in Orange County the first Wednesday of each month. It's an awesome gathering. You should check it out if you're anywhere near the area. You can find out more details of when the next one is on connectingthings.co. to get updates there and see all the other past videos. But this month's speaker was Sarah Armstrong, who's a graphic designer behind many of the favorite Orange County restaurants and coffee shops through a design company, which is a name brand co. Uh, she's a creator of a co-working space also in downtown Santa Ana called Batch. And Sarah talks about how we as freelancers are setting the bar with how clients interact with us and how to navigate some of those waters. It's a great talk. Hope you take something away that you can apply to your business and enjoy. Um, thanks for coming out. It's super early um, for me. Um, <laughs> there we go. That's me. Um, my name is Sarah Armstrong. Uh, First and foremost, I am a human being. I like other human beings, mostly. I um, think a lot of times as creatives, we get really caught up in like our stuff that we do or our thing um, and forget that we're people, about other people. So that's the thing about me. I love really good coffee um, and incredible food and uh, jamming on my planner and uh, <laughs> really into uh, kind of trying to facilitate or, or bring out or encourage the inherent creativity in people, um, especially people that don't necessarily th see themselves as creative. Um, but that's like a whole other talk that we could have on another day. Um, I grew up doing art in some form. Basically, this talk is two parts. This first part is me validating me being here to you and talking about <laughs> what I do. And then the second part is the thing that I actually want to say. Um, so I grew up uh, doing art of all kinds, drawing, clay. Uh, even from a young age, I went through an embarrassing amount of office supplies. And, uh, you know, and then as I started to kind of grow up and turn <laughs> into a person, you know, like you kind of come of age and you start to actually grow into your personality. Um, was turning into this very like type A problem solvy logistic person and didn't really know how those two things were gonna rectify, this like artistic slant and being pragmatic. And then I discovered that graphic design was a thing and I was said I will do this with my life forever. Um, I will solve problems with pictures. Um, <laughs> And yeah, so I mean, I'm the least self-aware person you'll like ever meet. So I didn't know that at the time, but in retrospect, that's totally how it happened. Um, yeah, so I, I, you know, I took a graphic design class on my sophomore year of high school, where uh, they taught us Photoshop, and that is my still my only formal design training to date. I have been faking everything else since then, um, and I, you know, worked for. Uh, a few years in different art departments, great art departments, like super exciting, fun, creative places that I got to do awesome work in um, and realized that design itself wasn't actually the thing that I loved about this career. It was, uh, you know, if I never touch a computer again a day in my life, I guess I really don't care that much. Um, it was more about this idea of building like a genuine relationship with somebody and solving a problem that they had or like realizing, helping them realize some vision or dream or facility. Um, and I was never going to be able to do that working in an art department. Um, so uh, I moved out to Orange County and uh, to start <laughs> a name. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I love people that, that was a litmus test for <laughs> people that I can be friends with. Um, and I came out here to Orange County to start a name brand company. Um, if you've ever, it's just a creative agency out here, um, if you've ever had any specialty coffee in Orange County, I've probably made something you've touched or drank out of. Um, it's really my only claim to fame. Uh, we do a lot of like craft beverage and craft food stuff, uh, starting to move more into sort of like entertainment production. Um, it's super fun. I really can't believe I get to do this for a living. Um, I don't know if some of you feel this way, but I keep thinking I'm like gonna get caught. Like I really just keep waiting for someone to say like, it's probably like a grown man, probably like a grown man to say like, stop that. Like everyone stop paying her. That's not a job. That's not like, you guys, she's just like hanging out with her friends and like drawing pictures. Like this isn't a job. Like I really just keep waiting. I'm gonna just do this until that happens. Um, and, uh, I, I just get to meet people and figure out what they want to do and help them do that. And in the process, I get to hire some of my friends that are 10 times more talented than I am. Uh, a lot of them are here right now. So one of my favorite people to work with. Um, I get to hire people that I think are awesome and pay them and we get to make stuff together. 
Um, and I also just started uh, my company Instagram. Some of you have done this recently, Hoodspa. This is a hell. I don't know if you've ever done this, but like you have your own Instagram, and then you're like, I should have a separate Instagram for my work. It is the worst idea because you don't have any followers and no one cares. So I'm just going to give you a second to follow this on Instagram. <laughs> and I'm going to use as much of my talk to do this as I need to. If you want to take, I'll just wait for like a second. For you. Thank you. Right there. Thank you. I name brand co. That's the Instagram. A couple of you are doing it. I'll take it. That's fine. Um, so I was doing this for a couple of years, uh, doing this creative agency thing, and uh, my and just kind of working by myself or with you know contract um, at home or in coffee shops. And my brain was going to melt out of my ears just from loneliness and lack of stimulation because working for yourself is the worst and the most isolating thing in the world. So um, I started Batch, which is a uh, creative co-working studio in downtown Santa Ana. Uh, this is our building. It's this beautiful, historic Herbie Finley building in downtown Santa Ana. This is our door. And these are our five windows right here. We used to be just these three windows, but recently we added these two windows um, as we are doing this expansion. Because uh, over the past year, uh, Batch has grown like incrementally. And a bunch of Batch mates are here today. So thanks, guys. That's super cool, because this is not close to Batch. Um, and yeah, so we're in the middle of this expansion process right now. Here's a little bit of it. Um, this is also really cool and feels unfair about life that I get to do this. Um, you know, at, for those of you that maybe aren't familiar with co-working or have never done it, um, it's sort of the coolest thing because you get to maintain your autonomy of like your business and your entrepreneurship or whatever, but also work around a bunch of people that are doing the same thing and it kind of adds this feeling of like we-ness to what you do um, without sacrificing what you want to do. It's, it's really special. Like, you guys should come hang out. Um, but yeah, so we're doing all this stuff. There's all these details. These are all, Avo just came in, and these are his socks. They matched our new couch. Um, <laughs> so this should be all buttoned up in like a couple of weeks, and we're going to have a big party, and you're all going to come. And if you guys ever want to come hang out and work or do a thing, I think we're going to do a connecting thing there sometime, apparently next month. Um, anyway, so rather than talk about myself for this long, because I'm super bored talking about myself, uh, this is the thing I want to talk to you guys about. Um, since I have you here, um, I want to use this platform to share a thing that I'm really passionate about in our industry, um, which is this idea of us versus them um, and sort of this unspoken vilification of our clients that we tend to do. Um, and this can apply, like I realize like we're not all necessarily creatives or like designers or writers or photographers. Like, Whatever this applies to in your life. It's fairly generic, but let's call it clients just for the sake of my talk, and that's what I've been practicing saying. Um, so this idea of like our unspoken sort of like vilification <laughs> of our clients. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, that's what they say like in our head. Like when you get that email and it's like, no, you're like, your ideas are super dumb and I hate you. Like that's how it feels. Um, we do this, and like we know we do this, um, and it's, I really don't think it's on purpose or like with any malicious intent, you know? It's just, uh, it's kind of therapeutic, like especially when you're in a small agency or freelance or whatever, you know, there's that sort of isolation and kind of feeling like people don't get, like this place is awesome, this column five place is awesome, and, and, and you guys get to work around each other and, and, and feel super connected. Um, connecting things. And there's this, <laughs> this thing, I think, it, that runs more rampant in sort of smaller operations where, you know, you want to feel like understood or feel like someone understands this like struggle. So when we get together, uh, it's really easy to sort of be like, oh, yeah, like this client, I got this email, and they suck, and they said these things, and they're ruining everything. Um, and that's why websites like this exist. Um, <laughs> And, and I get it, like, I spend a ton of time on clients from hell when I get shitty emails and, like, I feel awful. And this is therapeutic to go through and be like, other people feel this too. Um, and I think that's a really interesting thing because as creative professionals, there's this really weird balance of, like, artistic temperament, which is very, you know, sensitive and business acumen. And uh, it's tricky. Like, and no one's saying it's easy. Like, it's a tricky thing to like work as a creative professional because you have this artistic temperament and you're also supposed to conduct business. Um, and like, that's not easy. Um, so I th really think this is something we we have to work on. Um, it's not healthy for us or for our industry. Um, and just as a sidebar, like, I am not awesome at this all the time. Like, I'm not saying this because like I never 
hate on my clients or like respond inappropriately to an email or a phone call. Um, but I do really, really care about this, and I believe that like in this time where we really get to set a standard for our respective industries, that this is a thing that we should try and practice. Um, because our clients aren't our enemies, they're our partners. You know, like not only do they bring us money, which is super awesome, but they bring us opportunities to create amazing projects. Like no one else does that. Like no one pays you and gives you an opportunity to create things other than your clients. And we should treat them as such, you know, like we should treat them appropriately for the awesome things that they bring us and, and let us do. Um, because great projects are birthed out of great relationships, right? Like, all of my coolest projects that I love the most and am the most proud of like also have incredible clients behind them that like I love working with and we have a great relationship. Um, I mean I guess there are probably also good projects that have shitty clients but probably mostly good. Um, and I feel weird saying this because like column five m does a lot of really cool like infographics and stuff so the statistic isn't solid, but I would say <laughs> that like 50% of our job is education. Um, nobody check that. Nobody quantify that because it is not accurate. Um, I really feel like so much of this job as a creative professional or whatever it is that you do um, is education, you know, because your, your clients, they don't know this process, you know, like it's entirely likely that the people that are hiring you for whatever job or whatever thing have like never hired creative before. Um, like they are starting a thing or they're taking over someone's position and like they just know that they need to get a brand made or they know that they need to get a deck built or whatever. Like that's all they know, really. They don't know the, they don't know the process, they don't know the best practices, they don't know the language. Um, and that's not like their fault. It's our job to teach them that. Um, you know, I, I think we're all really conditioned to, like all of us, like creatives, normal people, everybody, um, you know, we're, we're trained like for our entire lives that like people in the service industry are kind of out to get you. Um, like whether you're hiring like a mechanic or like a plumber or some other job like that. Um, there's like this kind of conditioning where it's like you're gonna get taken advantage of. And we are in that same industry to people that are hiring us. Like they, they just wanna feel safe. Like your clients just wanna feel safe and taken care of and like you have their best interests in mind and that you're not going to like sneakily, you know, like cheat them out of something. Um, because we're the same way, like when we hire things, like we're like, well, I don't understand this, so like it's probably a cheat, like I'm probably being cheated. Um, and so beat them to the punch, you know, like explain things to people before they even have a chance to like ask you about it. Um, nothing has changed my like working relationships with my clients more than this practice of like sending out emails before anybody even asks about anything and just letting people know where projects are before they have a chance to like check in. Um, and just at every stage of the process being like, hey, this is where we're at. And then once you do this thing, we're gonna do this part and then it's gonna be this part. Like you cannot over inform your clients um, because they're gonna feel taken care of by you. Um, I'm not a monster. We love quotes on things on walls. So like there's a couple like letters for you because we love this. Because um, mostly people aren't actually assholes. Um, some people are, but mostly people aren't. Um, you know, by default, we shouldn't assume that like our, our clients, the people that we work with, are trying to cheat us. Um, I think when we're conducting our client relationships, we should practice giving people the opportunity to self-correct. Um, you know, like, uh, probably you're familiar with this, this idea of like scope creep, like you're working on a project and this is the project, and then you get an email and they're like, hey, so like while you're in there, can you also make a blah, blah, blah? And inside, immediately, I'm like, no, that's not the job, like why are you trying to get money, like extra work out of me and not pay me, like why don't you respect me, why do you hate me? It's like a whole thing. <laughs> um, but rather than do that, you, you just, uh, I would rather err on the side of sort of playing dumb and assuming somebody knows better. Like, just assume that they get it. Like, if someone's like, hey, while you're in there, do this thing, rather than be like, that's not the project. Just assume that they know that. And you're like, oh, yeah, totally. That sounds super fun. Do you want me to write up that agreement for this new project while we're still in this one, or should we wait till this is done? And in that, you give them an opportunity to correct. Like, you give them a very graceful opportunity to, like, bow out and be like, totally after this, 
you know? And, and if they are an asshole, like, you'll either find out or they still get an opportunity to fix it, you know, which is great. Um, and they will love you for that. Even if they are assholes, like, you can work through that together and, like, still give them an opportunity to be great clients by teaching them that. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so the whole point here is to, like, not treat the client like the enemy, but, like, just for the sake of, like, points and conversation, I'm just going to call them the enemy for, like, a second because I'm using some Sun Tzu quotes and, like, he talks about the enemy, but, like, I don't mean it. Just go with it. Um, <clears throat> so if you know the enemy and yourself, you need not fear the result of 100 battles. Um, I wrote an article about this a while ago on our blog uh, called Self-Employed, Self-Aware. Um, and I really think that in order to be most effective as creative professionals, especially if you run a, s a small team or you're self-employed or you're an entrepreneur or whatever, um, you're really never going to be as effective as possible until you really know yourself and your strengths and your weaknesses and you play to those um, in your business. Uh, and those of your client, like ideally. Ideally, you can be aware and sensitive to like how your client reacts to things and what they respond to, what they don't respond to, and like treat every project accordingly rather than just sort of like blowing through everything the way you would normally do. Um, and, and play these strengths and weaknesses to the betterment and advantage of yourself and to humankind. Like, you know, um, like for me, I hate meetings and phone calls. Like, they wipe me out. I've never, like, even if I have a great meeting and it's all super exciting, like, I've never been so drained and lacking life as, like, at the end of a meeting. And I'm not going to get anything done after that. So, like, I plan my life accordingly now and I don't plan to, like, do meeting after meeting after meeting because then I am doing a disservice to every client after that because I am dead and hate life at that moment. Um, but, like, the bottom line is that we're going to have to fight, right? Like, fight. If you're not looking, I'm doing air quotes. Um, <laughs> so we might as well learn to fight well, right? Um, another Sun Tzu quote, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Um, misunderstandings and conflicts and all unending manner of problems are going to happen, right? Like you're going to have to fight for money, and you're going to have to fight for your vision, and you're going to have to fight for fucking sanity. Um, so like we might as well learn to, to fight properly, right? Like, set yourself up for success, prepare, like, uh, so for me, like, if I'm working on project A and I'm, like, in it and I'm totally crushing it, obviously, um, and I get a phone call, like, I see a phone call come in from client B, like, I won't, like, I don't answer, I, I screen all my calls during the day, right, because, like, everything stops if I, like, come out of this headspace to answer this phone call for something I'm not prepared to talk about, I don't have it in front of me, like, and then I'm caught off guard to like answer this phone call and I'm not doing them a good service because I'm not in that headspace, right? Um, and in that, that's like a very small practice of just like setting myself up to like not fight or not have a problem to have to deal with later. Um, and really this isn't about winning or losing, you know, like uh, this isn't about like, oh yeah, like we got to do what we wanted to do and the client was wrong and we won. Um, it's kind of just about like not hating yourself after the fact or like not hating your client after the fact. Like I've had, you know, meetings or phone calls or whatever about projects and at the end of it, it was like, like I technically like won, but I feel super shitty about it. Like I don't feel good, you know, like I got what I wanted to get, but like I don't want to like talk to them for a while. Like that wasn't cool, you know, like we all, we're all fine and we're all professionals and we're all grown people, but like like I don't want to be that kind of human, you know? Um, and so being able to like know yourself and, and know kind of how your clients are and, and treat them like a partner, not an enemy, allows you to hopefully get to this place where you hate less of your life. Um, in conclusion, five minute timer, <laughs> sup? Uh, use your means to make nice. Uh, we are talented and smart and super attractive and probably all have great taste in movies and music and stuff. Um, <laughs> like, we have so much to give, you know? Like, we have so much to offer uh, the world and each other and our clients. Um, we should use that to, like, make great work and treat people well and, um, you know, generally make things better. I think it's, it's really interesting that, and I'm very excited about the fact that right now we really are in a time where, like, our industry is fairly new. Like, big picture, right? Like this whole like boutique agency, self-employed, creative, entrepreneur, like big picture, that's a really like new idea, right? Like within the past like 10 years, it's been very like common that people hire like independents or whatever. Blah, 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 blah. You get what I'm saying. Um, 
that's fairly new. And so like in our everyday business relationships and practices with each other and our clients, like we are setting the precedent for like how this industry is supposed to run. And I think that is so cool and so exciting and like feels incredibly liberating um, that like, and no pressure at all either, but um, like that's on us is like the way we conduct ourselves and the way we set up ourselves to do business with each other and our clients, um, like we're setting it. Like this is the standard for the people after us and the people that we're working alongside now. Um, so be excellent to each other. And party on dudes. That's it. Thanks. <laughs> Did I nail it? Time wise?